Hey guys, in this video we're going to follow up on our depth culling technique from the last video and we'll use that to try and create some of these hologram materials here. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, we'll start by pulling in a copy of our character blueprint into our work folder. And let's go ahead and rename them. I'll just call them hologram. And let's open them up. And since he's going to be a hologram, we'll go to the capsule and we'll search for a collision. And under collision presets, we'll just put it to custom. And I'm just going to ignore everything except world static. And that's just so that he doesn't fall through the ground. And then we can go ahead and close him. And then let's go get a copy of our depth culling material that we made in the last video. And we'll move a copy to our work folder. And we'll rename this M underscore hologram. And let's go ahead and open it up. And since this is going to be a hologram, we can turn off some of the more advanced shaders. So we'll scroll down and we'll see under lighting mode, we'll put that back to the default of volumetric non-directional. And we'll go back up and under the shading model, we'll put that to unlit. And then we won't need some of these attributes so we can unhook them, base color, metallic, roughness, and normal. And then what we're going to do is we're going to create a material layer for the hologram and we'll plug that into here. So let's go back to the content browser and we'll come down here and we'll right click and we'll choose materials and textures and we'll go to material function and let's rename it MF underscore hologram and let's go ahead and open it up. Okay let's first start with our output nodes. I'll take this one and I'll call it emissive out. And then we'll do another output node, and we'll call this one opacity out. Then let's come over and we'll do our input nodes. And I'll call this first one color in. And then I'll leave it as a three vector. And then we'll copy and paste. And we'll do another one and we'll call it normal in. And then we want to create the normal map for the hologram. So we'll come out of the normal. And to do that, we need a transform. And we'll choose transform vector ops. And we'll leave it on tangent to world space. And then we're going to plug this into a Fresnel. And then we'll plug this into the normal. And we'll give the Fresnel some base values. I'll put the exponent at 1.75 and the reflect at 0.25 and you can play with these values later and we're going to comment this and we'll call it normal map and then we want to come down and we want to give the hologram some pixelation so we'll pull out a texture node a texture sample and we'll choose the Perlin noise for now it comes with the starter content and then we'll come out of the UVs and we'll do a texture coordinate and for now, I'm just going to ramp these up to 100. Now, normally, you don't want to do this. You would want a properly sized texture sample. It's a little more optimized that way. And also, you could choose what the pixels look like. They could be like the classic square pixels, or you could do like the matrix digital symbols or whatever you want. And I'll just highlight this, and I'll comment it, and I'll say pixelation. And then let's combine these two with a multiply. Then we'll come down here and we want to work on the bands. So we'll get a generate band node. And we want to adjust the width, sharpness, and compare. So we'll pull out three single constants. And for the width, I'm going to set it to two. This is how thick the bands will be. And then for the sharpness, I'll leave it at zero. This kind of creates the blurriness between the bands. And then for the compare, I'll put it to 1, and this kind of evenly distributes the bands. And so again, you can play with those values later. Then for the input, I'm going to do a panner. And I just want the bands to pan on the y-axis at a speed of 2. This will move them up and down his body. And then for the coordinates, I'm going to get a bounding box. And this gets the coordinates of his body on the X, Y, and Z axis, and we only need the Z axis, 
but before I hook it in, I'm going to do a multiply node, and I'm going to put 125, and then I'll plug it into the coordinate. And this multiply here is very similar to like a texture coordinate. It just tells the generate band node how much to stretch across the z-axis. And then I'll highlight all of this, and we'll call this bands. And then we want to come down and we want to work on the outer edge glow. So for that, I'll get a texture sample. And I'm going to put this one to the smoke that also comes with the starter content. And I want to pan this so that it creates a little bit of a shimmering effect. I'm going to pan it on the X at a speed of negative 0.15 and on the Y at a speed of 0.3. And then I want to combine that with a Fresnel function. So we'll choose this one here, Fresnel function. And we want to adjust the power value of it. So we'll pull out a single constant. And I'm just going to set it to 10. And this is going to just determine how thick the outer edge glow is. And then I'll multiply these two together. And then I'll come over here and I'll do another multiply. And I'll just put it at 2 for now. And I'm going to put a comment that says mod outer edge. And then I need to plug this into the Z axis as well. And then I'll comment all of this and I'll say outer edge. Now I need to combine these two effects here, so we're going to do an add node. And then I need to combine this set and that set, so I'll do that with a multiply. And let me pull these out so I have a little more room. I'm going to do a subtract off of this one. And I'm going to say subtract 0 0.09. And I'm going to put a description that says mod opacity. And then I'll plug this one into the opacity out. And then I'm going to come over. I'm going to get the base color. And I'm going to do a multiply. And I'm going to multiply in where all the four points connect. And then I'll do another multiply, and I'm going to give this a value of 50, and I'm going to give it a description that says mod emissive, and then I'll plug this one into the emissive out. Okay, let's go ahead and save that. All right, and let's go back to our hologram material, and we'll start by coming over here, and we'll change the color. I'm going to put it to a blue, but you can put it to any color you want. And then we'll come over here and we'll get rid of this placeholder and we'll drag this up and let's call in our new function and it was called MF underscore hologram and so now it's going to be another layer on this material and we'll start to hook it up so we have opacity to opacity and that's already going out to the final opacity then we have emissive to emissive and then we can do normal to normal and we're not going to do color from here yet. We'll come back to that. Right now, let's just take it directly out of here. So we'll do color to color. And let's save it. And now let's go back and apply it to the character. Okay, let's go ahead and select our character. And we want to apply the new material. But remember from the last video, before we do, we need to render him on the custom depth pass. So let's search for depth, rendering, mesh, render custom depth pass. And now let's go to the character mesh, and we'll scroll down until we find his materials. And we're just going to deal with element 0 for now. We'll get to element 1 in a little bit. But let's apply it to his body. And we can see that the depth culling isn't working now. So let's go back to the material, and we'll see how to fix that. All right, let's go ahead and scroll down, and we'll see the opacity mask clip value. Now normally this is associated with the mask mode, but it's affecting us here in translucent. And that's because if we go back to the original depth culling function that we created, in this video we talked about how pixel A is being compared to pixel B, and it's determining whether or not to delete that pixel. 
Now this whole process creates sort of a homemade opacity mask and because of that we need to deal with the opacity mask clip value over here. Now the problem we're running into is that pixels A and B are a lot more transparent than they were the last time. So what we need to do is lower the threshold and we'll put it to 0 0.000001 and we'll go ahead and save and apply that. And now if we check on the character we should see that the depth calling is working just fine again. Okay, and now we want to apply the material to element 1, which is for the logo. And we remember from the basics video that this needs to be a material instance. So we'll just rename this mi underscore hologram underscore logo. And before we open it up, let's go back to the material itself. And what we want to do is we want to come out of the opacity mask and we'll do a multiply node and we want to multiply the mask with our opacity and then we'll plug that into the final opacity and we remember from the basics video that the opacity mask is being fed through this plastic override and it's coming from this layer right here okay let's save that and then we want to go back and we'll open up our new material instance all right we'll activate the plastic override and then we'll set it to true and we'll activate the normal map and we'll select the logo and we can see that the opacity is being applied correctly here. So let's go ahead and save it. And we'll go back to the character. And let's apply the material instance to element 1. And we can see that we're running into a problem. It's deleting part of his chest. So let's go back to the material instance. We'll scroll down. And we can see that we can override the opacity mask clip value. And so what's happening is we combine the opacity mask with our opacity. And so now in the specific area around his logo, the clip value is too strong. So we're going to put it back to its default just for the logo at 0.3333. And we'll save that. And if we go back and check out the character, we'll see that now the logo is fixed. Okay, now that we have the basics for the hologram set up, we want to add some variety to it. So let's go back to the function. We remember that we had some mod values. We had one for emissive, opacity, and one for outer edge. So let's create some inputs and put it into each one. And we'll change them to a single scalar. And we'll call this one mod emissive. And we'll just close it down so that it fits. And then we'll copy this one. And we'll come down here and we'll call this one mod opacity. And we'll do one more for mod outer edge. And then let's go ahead and save that. And it'll automatically bring us back to the material because now we're getting some errors. So we need to plug something in here. So let's bring out a single constant and we'll convert it to a parameter. And I'll name this first one mod emissive. And I'll give it the default value of 50 again. And I'll plug it in. And then let's do the same for each of the others. Okay, let's save it and go back to the content browser. Okay, let's move our guy over a little bit. And we'll create a duplicate. And let's create a new material instance. And we'll go ahead and save and apply it. And we'll go to our new guy and we'll come to his mesh. We'll apply the new instance to his body. And then let's go ahead and open up the new instance. And let's bring this over to the side. And we'll zoom in for a side by side comparison. And we'll activate the different mods. And we'll start with opacity. We can increase his opacity by lowering this number or we can decrease it by raising the number. We can also go to the emissive and we can increase his glow or we can make him dimmer. We can also do the same for his edge glow. We can make it brighter or we can remove it. And then we can also go down and again, we can activate the opacity mass clip value and we can bring back the internal geometry if we want. And now let's close this and let's go back to the base material. And one more change that we can make is we can come out of the base color here and we'll do our own static switch parameter. 
and if it's true, it'll use the base color that's fed through all of the material blends and uses the texture mask. And if it's false, it'll just go straight to the base color. And let's just rename this real quick. We'll call it color mask. And then we'll feed this one into our color in. And let's go ahead and save that. And then we'll go back to our material instance. And let's just quickly put all these back to default. And now we can see our new parameter switch right here, color mask. And let's set it to true. And now we can see that it's using that texture mask from the original mannequin material. So we'll save that and we'll close this down. And let's zoom in on the guy. And now we can see that instead of just the solid blue color, he has the different uh, texture masks applied to him. So you can experiment with different values for both the body and the logo. And you can also add extra parameters if you need. But we'll stick with these for this video. Okay, since this material function here has a lot of in and out pins, they're kind of getting jumbled and we want to keep it a little more organized. So let's go back to the function. And just really quickly, we'll go to each one of the input outputs and we'll change their sort priority. So for color, we'll leave it at zero. For normal, we'll put it to one. And then for emissive, we'll put it to two. And opacity, we'll put it to three. And for edge glow, we'll put it to four. And then the same thing for the outputs, we'll leave emissive at zero and we'll put opacity to one. And this just arranges their order on the function call. So let's go ahead and save that. And we'll go back to the material. And now we can see that the input output nodes are a little more organized and the wires don't cross as much. And that's just so that you don't make mistakes about where you're plugging things in. So let's go ahead and save that. All right, we're all done making our hologram characters. And just like we learned in the basics video, it's one base material. And then we use all the layers and instances to create the different variety. And in the next video, we'll work on a different effect. And we'll use that to check out something called dynamic material instances. And that's so that we can change the value of the parameters during gameplay. But for now, please like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video.